on a great figure eight or a tiny infinity. Love is really nothing, just a dream that keeps waking me. For all of my trying, we all keep on dying. How can it be? Don't say a word, just come over and lie here with me. Cause I'm just about to set fire to everything I see. I want you so bad, I'll go back. Just said it. I'm scared you'll forget about me. Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out The Edge of Desire by John Mayer. Pretty heavily requested one this. I haven't done it before now because I've really struggled with the playing and singing it at the same time. So I've been using it as a bit of a challenge to myself. I don't think I've nailed it properly, but I'm most of the way there. I think it's just going to be a little bit more practice to iron out the few minor details. But really, really nice one to play. Even if you're not going to try and do the singing and playing at the same time. Really great pick and exercise. Great for getting the thumb over coordination. There's lots and lots of stuff going on here. It's really fun. I am going to take you through the solo as well. Uh, the chord part that I've been playing is kind of what he seems to do live. There's a great version of him playing it uh, for Nam the year that it got cancelled because of COVID. He's doing it on acoustic guitar, so I'm kind of using roughly the chords that he's using there, but I'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the layering that's going on there as well when we get to that part. Let's get to a close-up. Check it out. So the first chord is this... Um it's essentially an E triad with an A bass note, okay? Thumb is playing the fifth fret on the thicker string. Third finger plays the seventh fret on the fifth string. Second finger plays the sixth fret on the fourth string. And first finger plays the fourth fret on the third string. And we do this little pattern. We play thicker string, fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, third string, fourth string. Note that we've got a bit of palm mute on as well. So this hand is using all down picks all of the way through, except for the strumming part in the chorus. And you want a little bit of palm mute, but not too much. Again, you're going to have to experiment to get the, just the right amount of palm mute, something uh, you definitely want to be paying a bit of attention to. So we got this pattern so far. Then we have bass, seventh fret on the fifth string. Now, first thing's got to, it's kind of awkward to keep the thumb in the same place, but you need to try and do that. So, first finger is playing the fourth fret on the third string, on the, sorry, on the fourth string. And then you're going to play sixth fret on the third string with the third finger, fourth fret on the third string with the first finger. And then, actually, I think I usually use my third finger, seventh fret uh, on the root note there, the uh, seventh fret of the fourth string. So, that pattern is this. that pattern twice then it moves the same thing up to a D so all we're doing now is moving our thumb up to the tenth fret exactly the same shape then we go to a B minor So this one is playing, this is 7th fret on the thicker string with the thumb, then ninth fret on the 5th string, 7th fret on the 4th uh, string and back, then 7th uh, fret on the 3rd string, 9th uh, fret on the 4th string, this last section, bass note with the thumb, 3rd finger, 9th fret on the 5th string, that's sixth fret, seventh fret with the first finger on the third string. Then third finger is going to roll on the ninth fret from the fourth string to the fifth string.
So then we move to an E. We've got the thickest string being played open. Using the tip of your first finger to mute that fifth string so it doesn't ring out. And it's going to be barring the uh, strings two, three, and four and muting the thinnest string as well. So first finger's got a bit of a bit of a workout there. You play the thickest string, fourth string, then second finger goes down in the tenth fret. So it's like an E sus four, tenth fret on the second string. Now this pedal note, I'm not sure if it's that note or that note, it seems to change, I listen to it, I think it's that, nine, uh, open, nine, ten, nine, nine, and then back to, but this note, sometimes I think it's this note, so going, I just, I can't decide, it seems different every time I hear it, I don't think it really matters. leave that bar down you're going to play the 11th fret on the third string and you're going to play that note with it then lift off the third finger so you're playing these two notes then this is 12th fret 11th fret 9th fret with this note ringing out at the same time and then you slide your first finger back to the 7th fret so Last time there's this little variation. It's just using your third finger to play th seventh fret on the third string, it rolls back over to seventh fret on the fourth string, sixth fret on the third string with the second finger, fourth fret on the third string with the first finger, and then back to the root. Okay, it's just the very last time before at the end of each uh, verse. verses. So now we hit the chorus and there are a few different approaches to that. Uh, on the original recording there's quite a few different layers. Uh, there's a nice ostinato figure that you can pull out if you want. Uh, I think a suggested version would be uh, starting here first finger on the uh, fifth fret of the second string, second finger down on the sixth fret of the third string and you're going to be putting your third finger down here on the same string as your second finger. <laughs> We're just playing the open D string, second string, third finger goes down, second string again, back to second finger, and then second string. Then the to the A, because the chords are essentially D to A. Here, open E string, open D string. be clear I think he's just playing the ostinato figure by itself the I think that's a separate layer and the chords are happening but uh, you can incorporate that open D bass note and the A note seems to kind of work nicely together uh, but I've, another version that I've seen him do live which I think is real sweet is he changes it to move it to a strumming pattern and he's using this like a D major 7 grip here so this is first finger in the ninth fret of the thinner string second finger 11th fret on the third string open D string and the B now actually what I think I've seen him do live on the acoustic thing is to actually play this he's muting the fourth string so he's playing the bass note with his thumb third finger on the 12th fret of the fifth string second finger is still down on the, 11th, the same spot it just seems really difficult to do that and John Mayer's got really big hands so for what's easy for him is difficult for most of us humans so uh, I think this is a nice alternative so literally just playing thinnest four strings open 11 open 9 
and then moving that ninth fret up. to A. So this is open, seven, six, open, open. And then just put your little finger down. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Back to D. to have this sort of strumming thing going on as well rather than being so busy because the verses are so complicated and then you're back into that verse sequence so that would be my recommended approach to playing the tune, having the, the very detailed, complicated verses and then simplifying it for the choruses. If you're in a band and you've got different layers, then you could definitely spread that out and have somebody playing some, some chordy parts and other people playing the little ostinato figure if you wanted to. But it's, then you're making your own arrangement and you can do it kind of however you like. So... Uh, that's the majority of the song, except for the solo. Now, I'm going to go through the solo, and the reason I'm going to go through the solo is a really nice one from John Mayer, because very rarely are John Mayer solos easy. And this isn't super easy, but it's definitely not one of the, the real hard ones. So there's a few nice things in it. You want to be hit with your string bending. Uh, at least it's relatively slow, so you've got a bit of a handle on it if you're fairly new to the lead guitar thing. Um, what's interesting about it is that you have that same little ostinato figure going again. <laughs> That goes around, but then you end up with some chords going over the top. So the chords start with an A. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So F sharp, probably F sharp minor. One, two, three, four, two, a D. Or a D power chord if you prefer. And then an A. And then the solo starts. A again. F sharp, two, three, F sharp minor, two a D, two, three, four, two an E, two, three, four, two an F sharp, two, three, four, two D, two, three, four, A. Second bar there, three, four, and two, don't say a word, just come over, which I'm starting on a D chord. So what I've done is I've programmed a little loop doing... So I looped that in my uh, quad cortex down there, uh, and then I added power chords playing that sequence that I've just given you there. So I've got it starting on the A chord. If I just uh, turn my little gain sound on, make sure I've... And then go on to my looper. Now I've got to kind of contort myself to be able to do it. I'll just... I'm going to play the first note slightly late. I should have moved the, the quad cortex where I could use it with my feet, which is it's not the whole idea of a foot switch, not a hand switch. should have put it over here, but I didn't. Uh, anyway, here, this is what it sounds like. See, a relatively simple solo. Let's go through it bar by bar. So we're starting here, the 12th fret on the second string, tone bend. It's played over the A chord. Then the chord changes to the F sharp minor. We've got another 12th fret tone bend. Then when it changes to D, we've got... 
kind of fades out, so I'm not exactly sure how many times he's doing it. Important there, you might not notice it straight away, but my second finger is uh, holding the, sec uh, the thinner string, and the rest of my hand is sitting on the other string, so that it, it, if I don't do any muting, you get all of this other stuff ringing out. So You just want to have that one note ringing out. Then 12, uh, 10, 12, 12 tone bend twice, and then two on the 12. Then it changes to the, that's on the E chord. Then it moves to the F sharp. So 10, 12, 14, semitone bend. Two on the release. It changes chord to the D and same thing. Then there's this nice little, little blues lick. He sneaks a blues in there. Uh, tw third finger, 12th fret on the second string. Tone, release, flick off to the 10th fret with the first finger, 11th fret on the third string. And that's our target note there falling on the beat. So that's really what we're thinking about. Don't worry about trying to count the other stuff. Far too complicated and not worth it. Then, so this one's a nice one, 12th fret, second string tone bend. Then little finger's gonna go and play the 12th fret on the thinner string. And then you do the bend again. So when you go to pick that thinner string, that's when you mute that, you pick the thinner string and mute the second string, ready to do the bend again. This is 14th, 15th on the 2nd string, 12th fret, 14th on the thinner string. Bend, tone bend, release, 12th fret, onto the 17th fret there for the final note. So let me try and count through that. This may be impossible, but I'll give it a go. So 3, 4, we got A, 2, 3, 4, F sharp, 2, Three, four, D, two, three, four, triplet, one, two, three, four, triplet, one, two, three, four, triplet, one, two, three, four. I know I forgot to mention the amp, so I figured I'd just show you this. It's the Quad Cortex. This is what I used for the Edge of Desire lesson. Uh, the amp I was using was the US Deluxe Normal. You can see the settings uh, there if they all come out. Uh, I was using the Analog Delay. Uh, there's the settings I was using, the important one, I guess, the delay time there, uh, 441 milliseconds. Then I was using a plate reverb. It kind of sounds a little bit springy to me as well, but I just like the sound of the plate better. Uh, now you can see the settings on the screen. I used the looper as well uh, to do the solo lesson thing. It's a great looper in this thing, I must say. And uh, the speakers looks like the 112 US Deluxe Black C12Ks. And uh, yeah, just a dynamic and a ribbon, which is probably what I would have put on it had it actually been in the room with it. Uh, and then, yeah, the uh, I used this Myth Drive uh, for the solo sections. And that's it. That's all I used. I really hope you have as much fun learning this song as I did. There's just loads of interesting things to sink your teeth into. Even just getting that main riff took me a little bit longer than I might have thought. Uh, getting the feeling of it, and it's a, it's a lot slower than I thought. Every time I play it, I listen back and go, you're too fast again. I listen to the original one, try and calm it down. There seems to be a thing. John Mayer's really good at doing these really slow tempos and keeping it 
real steady. I find that really difficult, especially these kind of tunes. I just naturally speed it up as soon as I get to a bit panicking about the singing or whatever and focused on that, I lose a bit of my tempo. But uh, playing along with the original recording and trying to soak into that real nice slow tempo, I think is a, another, one of those little key things. There's a few other things that you might want to check out. If, you, if there's other moments in the track that you feel are important harmonically, you might want to try and bring it into your own arrangement. Uh, there's a little bit of harmony there. Sometimes it happens in the solo. You might want to check out as well. So there are still a few things if you want to sink your ear into this a little bit deeper uh loads more john mayer over on the website if you haven't checked it out late, lately loads of the big hits all of the fun guitar stuff so you might want to go and check that out if you haven't been over the website in a while justinguitar.com forward slash songs you leave requests as well this one was a request on the request board actually loads of people put it on the on the lesson for uh, body is a wonderland which was that was already a funny one to play and sing at the same time this was definitely next level and a uh, big thanks to everyone that recommended it and forcing me to kind of up my game and seeing if uh, if i could get it together uh i think that's enough for now have a fantastic day wishing you all of the best i'll see you for plenty more very soon you'll take care out there bye bye